there's a point in life where you have to decide um, what life you want to live. If you want to live a regular life, then you will do regular things. If you want to live whatever, whatever dream life that you have, then you have to understand that you're going to go through a wilderness. But as long as you keep moving forward through that wilderness, you're going to get to that dream. Welcome to 2024, brothers. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sound the we horn here. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> we are here. We here, man. Yes, yes Jack. indeed. Like skin popping, yeah, like man. brothers, like hydrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah I said dead sea salt. <laughs> you, gotta go over, you gotta go over to the oil. <laughs> you get some of that coconut oil. Yeah, the oil. That oil. So 2023 was. It was 2023. 2023 was. It was a beautiful year. It was I, an interesting year. I thought it. it I, I think it had a lot of different kind of things in it. That. Depending on where you are, your life, and what's going on with you, that you could, yeah. It, it, 2023 gave us a lot of shit to tap into and connect with. Really, it's just, I think, to expose some shit that's probably already, you know, inside of us. And what I wanted to try to do is see if we can share some stories about some wins, some losses, some accomplishments. Some things that we're working on, how we feel, you know, we're setting ourselves up for 2024 and, and just to kind of, you know, reflect and, and acknowledge, man, who we are as men and what we've done, man. And we, cause we, we doing some beautiful motherfucking things, though. At least that's what I see and feel. Yeah. No doubt, man. Despite the world falling apart. Yeah, man. All around us. Yeah. But the world is always falling apart. So uh, I'll start. Mm hmm. I got married. You got married, you son. Got married. Live hand clap. Yeah. Live hand yeah, clap. yeah. 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 That was Beautiful uh, thing. It's a big deal, man. Yeah. 6-6-2023. Six, six, so far. So good. Dope. We uh we lifing. We wifing. <laughs> we husband. It, 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 it yeah. got his, it, I'm not gonna say shit got harder, but <clears throat> I think it's just what it is, man. The dynamic changes. It, 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 it's and it's not bad, but it ain't. I can't say it's. I can't say it's good. It, I think it's just what I find myself trying to do when I'm assessing something is that I try to break it up into as many pieces as I can, mm -hmm. and then judge the individual pieces. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you do that, sometimes you're missing like what all of those joints together combined represent. Okay. So I find myself sometimes trying to pick the things apart. And so when, I, when I'm asking myself what do I think about like the last six months, there's a lot of shit that I could hone in on and dissect. But as a whole, I'm happy. That's interesting, yo, that we're opposites. You like to go in there and break the pieces apart. I zoom, I immediately, on uh, any situation, I zoom out. Mm. I want to get a big picture of that thing and everything around it. That's how, that's how I do. I zoom out. I don't zoom in. So when you zoom out, how do you, how do you assess? Are, what are you assessing? I'm assessing that thing as a thing, right? And how it's positively or negatively affecting the thing around it. So while that thing itself could have all types of things going on inside of it, right? Boom, boom, boom. And you can pick something to say, this is bad, this is good, this is the... These 10 things are bad, blah, blah, blah. But as a whole, that thing could be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't determine that unless I zoom out. Because if, if it's good, if, it, if I can look at this thing and see how it's affecting its environment and the things around it and see that everything around it is positive, then it itself, now, now I need to go in there and see 
why am I looking at it or what I need to look so, at. So, so there people. is a there is a point where you switch from macro to micro. Yes. I gotta okay. do my okay. first. I was okay. making sure that I was about to say, because at some point, at some point we can all look at it from a macro perspective, but there has to be mm-hmm. a moment I'm where just, you get to the micro. I'm right? the opposite. I mean, he's so like, you, you start micro. I start micro. micro. Right. Do I you start. ever make it to macro? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and but that's, that's the thing, because some people in the micro never actually make it to the macro. And they end up making decisions that the are lopsided. Mm-hmm. That that's the danger really, of it, I think. That, yeah. That's the danger. And that's why I have to zoom out mm-hmm. to look at the totality of the situa- situation rather than picking it apart. And it's mainly because that's what I do to myself. Mm-hmm. I'm picking myself mm-hmm. apart. Mm-hmm. And I have to zoom out on me sometimes and be like, you a ill nigga, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Yeah, you stumbled over there. That don't mean yeah. the whole your whole existence is wild. Like you doing some good shit over here too. But I okay. al- I always start with the with the micro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I think that's what my I think that's what my default is and I have to zoom out. How about you? I realize that I do them both simultaneously. Huh. And depending on the perspective of the individual that I'm discussing the issue with will be what I hone in in that discussion. So, for instance, if something happens, instant, I don't know what it is, I instantly see both the macro and the micro, mm-hmm. right? And then I will, I will always weigh each, I will pinpoint the micros, but always the, the macro is still all there. Mm. So if this is a bad situation, first off, it's very rare that I ever look at anything as super bad, right? right. Like I am a, I am a naturally even keeled. <laughs> um, I always look at the positive side of everything first. So even in, even in, in when I'm dissecting the situation, it has to prove to me that this is a negative situation. <laughs> okay. It always has to prove itself negative to me. Even if it's negative, right? I'm not saying I will pull, I will only look for the positive. I will always recognize the positive in there. I think people, now the buzz phrase is giving grace. Like I'm always giving grace to every situation. And I, I don't know whether it's a good, bad, or indifferent, I'm not sure. Um, but it's just it's just what it is. That's a good when, way to be. When, but uh, let me tell you what I'm hearing, and then correct me because I know it's wrong. But this is just what my brain is interpreting what you're saying as. I'm wrong ain't bad, <clears throat> and I think that if you're saying that it has to prove to you that it's wrong, that I'm hearing you say that you've got to work to accept the reality of a situation if it's if you perceive it as negative in your mind no so let me let me preface this by saying wrong is wrong right so at micro or macro wrong is wrong right like it's going to be wrong right and so i'm not i'm not talking about from that perspective i'm just saying across the board like if something is wrong it's wrong right and and if there's a gray area then I'm going in gray. So when right? you said prove to you that it's wrong, what did that mean? I said negative. Negative, my bad. Negative and my wrong bad. are two my different bad. My things. My bad, negative. Right, because yeah. one is a perspective. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're, you're right, you're right. I used, I, I, I conflated the yeah. two. Okay. And negative is perspective. But it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's just the way you look at something from a negative perspective. So why does it have to, why does it have to prove itself negative to you? If negative I, isn't wrong. I preface that by saying, depending on who I'm talking to. Ah, uh, okay, just, okay. Last night we were driving, I was listening to this book. In the book, the gentleman said, um, he said, I, I graduated from school with a near perfect GPA, which got me into Harvard Business School. Mm-hmm. Now, I've never heard anyone mm-hmm. say a 3.8 or 3.9 is near perfect. His perspective is all yeah. His perspective on that is I was is 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 all great. Like I was nearly perfect. Like I was just there. You could have someone else who could say, 
who could look at that 3.8 or 3.9 or whatever it is, I'm giving it a number, which is dope because he didn't even actually give it a number. He just said near perfect. It's up to the listener. It's up to the listener, right? But there's Mm. another person who could say, I had a 3.8 and I wasn't perfect. And that's where they get stuck in, that negative perspective Mm -hmm. to it. So that's what I'm saying. For me, when I look at something, it has to prove itself negative to me. Got it. I'm always going to look at it as okay. a near perfect I got GTA. you. Okay. So when I, when I heard you say prove in my mind, I'm thinking. Yeah. It has to convince you. Yeah. Right is right. Wrong is okay, wrong. I got you know it. what I mean? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We had a conversation about dreams yeah. and about you setting your goals, bro. Yeah. And you, uh. You did some dope shit last year. You know, it it did not fall short on me that I sat in this very spot two years ago. Oh, it was two years? It was two years my ago. My bad, my bad. It just so happened to be like the November of the year we okay. sat here okay. when it aired. Because it feels uh, like it's almost a year to the day, but technically like it is. Everything happened last year. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> and the reason why is you'll see, as you can tell, I went back and looked it up. Because on this couch was the was the first time I had actually said it out loud. I had mm-hmm. just come to that. Remember, if if we go back and look at the episode, which I did, <laughs> my God, <laughs> right? I, I looked at it and I was and I knew in the moment that I was I had just come to the realization about dreams and goals and learning how to dream. And then they say you had an awakening. Um, I don't know if it was so much of an, an awakening as it was that I realized that I hadn't been doing something. Well, I guess it can be an awakening, right? That I that I that I had never actually dreamed. I didn't know how to dream. One, um, and because of that, I was shorting myself on goals because the year prior to that, earlier that year, I had just decided to start writing down some goals, some things that I wanted to do. Um, and then when we had, when this, when this, when that episode aired, I had actually, that was my second shot at this thing I do every year started then in January of like writing out some goals for the year. Mm -hmm. And so in 2023, I decided that I had a goal that I, I wanted to completely shift, um, my career path. If I was going to work for the next Go ahead. Can I ask a question? Yeah. When you write your goals out, are they all um, business oriented or along the same path, or, or are you t- do you break them up into like, in the you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. things that matter to you on a spiritual level or whatever it might be, a religious level mm-hmm. or relationships and all that kind. Of, do you break it out into categories like that? Nope. So what I do is, uh, yes, but in a different way. So what I do, and we were just talking about this a few minutes ago off camera. For the month of January, I technically should probably do it in December, but a lot is usually happening. So for the month of January, I just take a look at my life overall. Mm -hmm. Just the things I want to do, the things I think are cool, the things I don't, any professional goals, any personal goals, things that I think would be just awesome to accomplish, right? And this this goes back to the, the conversation before about learning to dream. What I realized was that first year that I tried it, that the goals were really kind of weak, right? Because I, I, I didn't know how to dream, which is a thing. Like you actually have to learn how to dream. And in order to dream, you have to remove something that is prohibiting you from thinking that things are possible. Mm-hmm. Which if you're an analytical person, you're always looking for validation of the possibility, which stops you from actually dreaming, yeah. right? And I'm an analytical person. And so, um, so I did all of that. And so what I normally do is I take that month, then after that, when it's time, I take those two or three days, I usually take them in the middle of the week. That way, when I go to Florida, nothing is happening to kind of take my focus away, um, lock myself in the room, for one of those days, and then I just, I write it all down. So I've, I've thought of these three things. What do I want personally? What do I want professionally? What do I want um, interesting? I never did it before, but this year, what do I want out of my marriage, right? Mm-hmm. What do I want out of my relationships with friends? 
And then after I write those, after I give those, account, I make an outline. After I give those a, a, you know, a, a, a capital letter, then I do my sub bullets after, under that. Well, what am I gonna do to a, a, a accomplish this goal? And so last year, one of the goals that had been on my list since I had retired from the Air Force in 2016 was, you know, I wanted to be in the EEO space, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but when I- And for the so, slow people, that's equal employment opportunity. Right. I was good. I was, so, what if I was wrong? And then and I was, like, I was Yeah, you put yourself no. out there. Right? Which My is, bad. I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> Which is great. I, I didn't want to have to correct you on the other side. You could have edited that out. No, I believe it is. I'm the slight. Other side, the other side of it is that's also the DEI space, too, right? Like they kind of go hand in hand. And so, um, so I, had, I, I put something on my phone on my home screen and that was that. But last year I decided, all right, now I'm going to actually go after this goal. So what do I got to do? Right? Because I switched my perspective on it. Before I just wanted to do that. I thought it would be cool to do with something that I do a lot of outside of the work with the NAACP and just social justice and stuff at, uh, outside. But um, I, my perspective changed when I looked at my dreams, the ultimate goals, my age, right? Hmm. I'll be 48 in a couple of months. I'm like, well, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? Right? Like, because the rest of my life ain't that much longer. So it's time to start mapping out some happiness in this joint. You know what I mean? And if I'm going to go to work, what does that look like? Well, do I love what I do? Yeah, I like it. I can do it. It's pretty cool. It's not a bad thing, but I don't love it. Well, what do I love? Well, I love the DEI space, right? Um, all right, well, if I love the DEI space, then what do I want to do? All right, I'll get an EEO position. Cool. So I put that down. I wrote down my actionable steps to that. I was going to go on USA Jobs because I'm a government employee now, and that was the easiest way to slide over first. I can... I can go over there, get all the training that I need to validate myself. And if I have to market myself outside later on, cool, I got the government to pay for it, right? So I marked down some stuff and then I just started tapping into my network at work, which, and we could talk about this a little later in terms of the importance of mentorship, like what real mentorship looks like. A lot of people um, pervert the phrase. Mm. Um, and use it as a way of paid or something like it's it's not it. Um, I tapped into two individuals in my office who do this, who do that, and I and I picked their brains and asked them what to do. And then I set up a thing in USA Jobs and said I was going to I was just going to take the shot. I would apply for one every month, and that so that means it would have been twelve, right? I got to April and I was like. I don't know about this. I've only applied for three jobs so far. You know, it takes a little while. Let me reassess this. So I, I decided I read this book, right? I read this one book about, um, about setting your goals. And it said to, you know, go back and look at your goals periodically to, to see if you need to readjust them. So I did that. Went back in and then turned the faucet on and said, all right, I'm going to refine my search criteria all the way down. That way there's nothing for me to think about when USA Jobs sends me um, the announcement. So whatever announcement hits my email, you now have 24 hours to apply for this job. Now, USA Jobs is not an easy task, no. right? It's a painstaking. Yeah, I ain't help. Yeah. So to get a government job, you got to go through hell and hell. It's not just sending your, you, you got to answer all these questions about the job, your knowledge, your qualifications, all of those things. I did that. And then I just start firing them joints off, man. And what was crazy was talking to the two individuals through the mentorship that they were giving me, who were, con who were reminding me, like we were just talking about earlier, like, from a macro level, no, your resume is that. Like what you want is actually attainable. It's not as hard as you think it is. You just need someone, you need to be able to articulate it. How were you with that process? I bombed the first interview. 
But I was so excited, B. Mm-hmm. I can't even tell you, I can't even tell you that that feeling mm-hmm. of applying for a job and then in this career field that you weren't sure, you know you do it out here, but you don't know if your resume was actually speaking to your transferable skills. And it was. The lady who wrote my resume did an incredible job. Shout out to her. Um, and so I got the first interview. Wait, you said you bombed. I bombed it. But you said it was ex- you're excited. Oh. Were you excited while you were bombing or after you bombed? I was excited that I got the interview. Okay. So quickly after it, I was excited that I bombed. Okay. Because that, that shows you something. Like the, the fact that, okay, someone looked at your resume and said, let's bring this guy in for, mm-hmm. for an interview. That shows you that you're at least on uh, the right path. And you yeah. saw your gaps. You saw what you could, right. what, where you could improve. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because remember, for me, that read the, the interviews, if I were lucky enough to get them, right, in my brain, They were fact-finding missions. So my goal was to get this interview. After the interview, try to get some information from those individuals on what I need to strengthen my resume or not. Because I didn't want to go in and get a master's degree and I don't need one. Yeah. Right? I didn't need That's two years down the road, right? Yeah. I didn't want to go do all these other things. I got all these certificates. I've done all of these things. So I need someone to tell me where to fill these gaps in, aside from these two mentor folks, right? I need... And so I bombed it. I bombed it because I didn't articulate my transferable skills very well because it was the first time. Yeah. Right? And I I didn't do it in a succinct way. Um, You did it like it was your first time. I did it like it was my first time. And I hadn't interviewed in a long time, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, I hate interviewing, bro. I feel like I suck at it. I don't usually have an issue with interviews. I don't have an issue with interviews. At all. I'm horrible. It It was just, there was, I was nervous. You know what I mean? And I put too much weight on, on the fact that I was jumping into this brand new career. I field. do that too. And I wasn't giving myself the mm-hmm. real grace that I was talking about yeah. prior to the interview. I wasn't standing on that confidence of my resume that I did. And that was the last one I bombed. And a confidence that this is what you do. This is what I do. This is what you do. This is do. who you like, are. This is who like, you like, are. Like, like <laughs> you are NAACP <laughs> Samson. Right. Like, it's to it, Jack. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm going to be at your school. I'm going to be all up in the videos. Right. Dancing. And then uh, after this, I'm going to call this congressman and have a conversation with yeah. him one-on-one. Yeah. Right? Like, I do yeah, this. this you, do. Yeah. you know? And so, but I didn't articulate that. Yeah. That, that people don't... Um, understand some people don't understand i didn't at one point the importance of what you said fact finding mission fact finding mission and i really man. to be honest i really gained a, a more of an understanding of that through joe button podcast mm-hmm. he would talk about how he went into certain spaces he went and made deals to learn yeah certain things yeah. and he learned about analytics he learned about data and all these things so that's an important thing. You take those chances, you put yourself out there by that's doing the them, you know, but you did that. You say, okay, let me go out here and see what this space is looking like. And then I can come back to the, to the shack, yeah. retool my situation yeah. and go out there and function more effectively in that environment. We yeah. did not, let me rephrase that and make that about me. I was taught to avoid failure. Mm-hmm. And his failure was a sign of weakness. It was a sign of incompetence. And it was something that you needed to avoid at all costs. And I can't, I can't imagine how wrong that is oh, in stop. hindsight. James. Failing forward is a thing, Jack. How much time have we spent? I don't want to jump. No, go ahead. Correcting the thing that we were taught. Yeah. Me too. You can include me in, in what you just said. Me too. I don't know about you. I was taught that failure is avoided at all costs. At all costs, bro. And, and that's not that's not what you should do. It's not at all. And it probably affects your dreams because, like, how big is your dream going? Like, minus the dream, but actually, the what's the point of dreaming if you don't think it's possible? And what's the point of doing something that's possible if there's a lot of uh, challenges a- along the way and that you're going to fail in pursuit of achieving the possibility? It's just not something that you're going to do. So your dreams get smaller. And then after a while, you get to a point to where your dreams, you don't even fucking dream. You don't not even dream. dreaming, yo. And you know what the reality is? Is failing, 
our perspective of failure is taught to us by a person or individuals in our lives who didn't see failure in their life as a pos- in their life as a positive. Yeah. Right? Some people never recovered from their failure. Yeah. Right? Because however they failed, it may have broken them or it may have just taken whatever they had yep. at the time. And when they went back to look at what happened, they may have stayed in the micro yeah. and never went back out to the macro to look overall that this failure wasn't a bad thing. If I look in the micro, well, I wasn't really prepared right here. Or like Joe just said, I bombed because I didn't do A, B, yeah. C, D, and E. And I know that I'm capable of that job. So yeah, you could tell me no, but if somebody else gives me another shot, I'm a rock day world based on whatever I failed at over here. Because I still I have that goal, I have that dream, I'm going towards it. And this and and I can't I can't speak more to what reading has done for my life in the last two years than anything else. Mm. Anything else being reading has has been one of the driving factors in my life forward since 2021. And it happened after we lost all of this weight, right? Lost all of that weight. I read this book, Atomic Habits. <laughs> That's what I said. That was the first one. And it never, I never turned the faucet off from that. And so it changed the way I looked at individuals. I start reading the autobiographies of individuals that I respected or that I knew of, and I realizing that failure is a part of the journey, right? I had to change how I was, how I looked at even setting a goal or even dreaming by realizing that I'm gonna take a few losses to get this win. In that book that I was just listening to that I talked about with the guy with the near perfect GPA, he said, there's a point in life where you have to decide Um, what life you want to live. If you want to live a regular life, then you will do regular things. If you want to live whatever whatever dream life that you have, then you have to understand that you're going to go through a wilderness. But as long as you keep moving forward through that wilderness, you're going to get to that dream. And then it'll be all worth it. So let me ask you a question, bro. Y'all got kids. How do they dream based on what y'all see? My my, my son, um, I'm glad you said that based off what what I see because truly I don't know, right? He can, he would have to say that. But from what I see, he's um, he's very close to me in, in nature. He's dreaming off passion. It's more about what makes him it's more about fulfillment and what makes him happy, um, and he dreams based off of that. He loves to do certain things, and he dreams that he can do those things forever because they make him happy. If What's his relationship sense. to uh, to failure? Um, he's growing. In the beginning, failure hit him harder than what it hits him now. So he's growing in that in that regard. Countless conversations, counseling sessions, sit down chats, yeah. talking about you have to just continue to go. And I told him, if you're not failing, then that means you're not actually trying. I mean, this is crazy cliche these, these, these days. Yeah. Everyone says it, but it's true. It's true. If you're not failing, bro, you're not trying. Yeah. You know what I'm you're saying? You're not so trying hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. The dreams ain't big enough. enough. Yeah, you're, you're not failing, enough. they're not big enough. They're not big you enough. You gotta yeah. just keep going. Put yourself in a space where you're going to get, even based off of our conversation that we had, put yourself in a space where you may even think that there's no chance, but just, just go, Discomfort. just go, just go do it. And what, you know, you might learn something from it or you might get it. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's his, his relationship with failure now is definitely much different than what it was when he was younger. How about you? Oh, my daughters, my daughters think everything is possible. Every, every single thing they can think of, they think is possible. My, my Kent Morgan just sent a meme in the uh, little uh, reel in the family chat the, uh, the other day that was like, um, that friend, she put mom and dad, 
and it was a, a video of the friend who always thinks that everything is a business idea. <laughs> because the girl, my daughters will tell you, if they can, if they, they have to actually refrain from telling us things that they think about. Because the second they say, oh man, you know, I think this is, and I'm like, let's do it. What, mm -hmm. what, what do you need? You need some funding? What you want to do? Have at it. And so Morgan, my youngest, has no fear of failure. Absolutely, positively none. She is a creative through and through. And for, in her mind, if she can think of it, she's going to give it a shot. Where do you think that comes from? Me and Tiff. You think you dream like that? I don't. Tiff does. Oh. Tiff believes that anything on this planet is possible. Anything. If it comes to her brain, she has to talk her brain out of not consume, not trying, after, not going after it. If it enters her brain, mm -hmm. and I, I was the opposite. I was the analytical guy. So I was the, well, I'll just make sure that there's money for <laughs> Tiff to, money in the bank. That way when Tiff's got this dream that she can chase it, right? Um, and not to say that, like, she doesn't have her own job and she is the successful human nah, being. No, man, she, is, she a kept woman. Right? Let it be, dog. <laughs> this ain't like, the 50s. This, 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 this ain't the 50s. I ain't got to give her permission for that. I need that on I the missed them day. I'm just kidding. Read <laughs> you're reading the newspaper? Well, I'll take a look at the account later. <laughs> yeah, on. exactly, right? Because <laughs> let's be real. Tiff told me when we first got married, I don't, I don't need to care about money. I just need to make sure whenever I swipe my card that <laughs> the, it goes through. Yeah, I hear say that. no more, right? <laughs> um, but no, so my daughters, we've always been like with that with them. And I learned it. Kennedy, Morgan, and Joseph Sampson learned that from Tiffany Sampson. Mm. You know, we, we absolutely learned dream, failure, failure doesn't even really exist in her mind. All right, well, it, that didn't work. Okay. One, yeah. what did I learn from it? And right. two, I got this other dream. Let's go over here now. And this, like, earlier when you were talking about, you mentioned failure uh, in regard to the earlier interview that you went on, mm -hmm. or, or maybe it was just one. Oh, but it's not, in my mind, that's not even actually a failure. Like, there's not. so many factors that's not in your control. Yeah when you're interviewing for a job. Mm -hmm. So that environment, it could be the, the person interviewing you, the boss could be an asshole, could be a racist, could be anything going on over there that you have no control over and they didn't hire you even though you were highly qualified because of some other factors. You going in there, interviewing, and, be, and being your best self is a success, period. Yes, and I say this to Trina is. all the time, my wife, who is also a government employee, and she you know, goes into these interviews. I'm like, listen, just go in there being who you want to be. That's it. And that is success, whether they hire you or not. Yeah. It's I, funny. Go, I go into interviews being myself, period. That conversation we had and you were saying about how comfortable you are being yourself actually stuck with me, bro. I don't know if I ever told you that. Like, I carry that. And it, 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 it almost like instilled in me the path of what it would look like because be, to be like you because I, I know you got I know you in your head about other shit mm -hmm. but you can still be you mm -hmm. and everything still be okay with that mm -hmm. and I thought that the shit that's in your head had to be all the fucking way figured out in order for you to be you and to be presentable like in a in a in a professional space to be accepted and it's like nah you can you can move and go show up in that way and be all of the parts of who you are. Straight up. Listen, that, we, got my, 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 not gonna say, that don't mean you in the joint talking about, man, get out of here. Man, <laughs> right, 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 tell, right, right. Telling the people you work with pause and shit. Hey, <laughs> 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 <And laughs> yo. Hey, <laughs> yo. <laughs> pausing someone during the interview <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> crazy. And that's the thing. Like, I, I learned, would like to see that, though. That'd I learned a big part of this in, in interviews. I'm like, listen, I'm going to have, I have a sense of humor. I'm gonna show you some of that now. You, you kind of you have to cater things to whatever crowd, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, yeah. <laughs> you know. But yeah, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna be myself. I have this set of knowledge. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna fake it. And and it is what it is. Yeah. And that's just it. And if y'all don't like it, then cool. I'll take my jokes somewhere else. 
So I want I wanted to I wanted to I wanted to tap into your 2023 win, bro. If that's cool, you good with that, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. What's up with your 2023, man? Like, what'd you what'd you what'd you knock out the park? You know, it was good. I was and it don't thinking. include hitting on raffles. Oh well, yeah, 2023 was a good year for raffles. For me, <laughs> you know sad. I wasn't gonna go there, but. Uh, I did bring a few joints squid if you want. <laughs> Y'all talk sneakers. Um, you know, I was sitting here while Joe was talking, and this a thought that I had before is that I love my circle of friends. We're so different, right? We're different, and even in this this triangle right here, it, I, I feel like I'm very different from Joe, and James is almost like a combination of us of us two. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm absolutely. saying? Because my and you might get it at this when I say it, but one I had to think about this. You know what I'm saying? Like when you sent us the notes and stuff like that, what we were gonna talk about. And for 2023, one thing I realized, I recognized and accepted is that I didn't have to be perfect to be close to God. That's mm. something that. I had problems with in the past, yo. Yeah. Like, I couldn't, you know, we're all, we all sin, right? Right. And this is where, this is where it is for me. We all sin. And I re- always recognized that about myself. But it was the more egregious things, like, um, you know, like being actually intoxicated, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Doing certain things, I felt like I couldn't do that and be this at the same time. And this is, based, this is based on the confines of the faith that you have. I'm a Muslim. Right. Right? So you can't pray. You can't worship when you're intoxicated. Right. You can't do certain things when you're intoxicated. You can't. You know what I'm saying? And I have, it was either all in or completely out. You know this. I do. Completely in or completely out. Now, I've never been out as far as my mind and my heart, yeah. but as far as practice and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not really talking about practice now. I'm really talking about me getting to a point in my spirituality that I always wanted to be at because I had to practice. But I never felt like I really had the this, this spirituality aspect mm-hmm. to the degree that I wanted it. And last year, bro, this is when I realized, yo, you don't have to be perfect. To, to to be close to God. And that and I recognize that and acknowledge that. And I was working on myself all year as far as like my spirituality and just setting myself up to be in a good position when I die. So what is that what does that work look like? When you say you were working on yourself, what does that what does that mean? It's all just just tackling what I just talked about is, is tackling that. Just being once I recognize that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then it's like, well, what's important to me? Mm-hmm. What what do you want? What do you not want? So in 2023, I recognize that I don't want to be in Hollywood. Now they might come out of nowhere for people watching, but I do content and stuff like that, right? I don't want to be in Hollywood. I don't want to be. In that culture, in that universe, I don't want to lose the things that I love. I don't want to change. And I don't want that. So then I have to look at everything that I'm doing and, and reassess. So why am I doing it? I'm doing it for passion. I'm doing it for fulfillment. I'm doing it because it makes me happy. I'm doing it because it brings me closer to my wife. I'm doing it for these reasons. If the money comes, cool. And I deal with that at that point. But I've never been a money chaser. Mm-hmm. I've never been a money chaser, yo. Blessed enough to be in positions where the money came, and that's cool. Um, but I just, I'm not willing to sacrifice certain things for fame or money. One of the things, I used to be real heavy in the church, bro. Heavy. I didn't cuss, if you could believe it. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> Crazy singing the choir. I don't. I feel like I don't even know. Who you are. 
<laughs> hold on, I'm going to say something else. It's going to be even wilder. It's going to be even wilder. This guy's a fraud. But, but I'm, 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 I'm connecting with what you're saying because I'm going somewhere with it. Masturbating, bro, and sex was a monster for me. Mm. And I felt like I was a piece of shit because I had this relationship with these things sexually mm-hmm. that I felt was keeping me from being closer to God than what I needed to be, mm-hmm. what I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And I had all this internal struggle, bro. I, and so much so to where I felt I was manifesting mm-hmm. negative things. So to give you an example, I would jack oh, off, man. pause, we having a, yeah, yeah. We're here. And something would happen. Like my car would break down. You were. And in my mind, you were tied you were tied that was the thread. Wow. It's like, see, wow. I knew I couldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have done that. I go sleep with this girl or whatever the case may be. So I went a whole year, one year, without masturbating or sleeping with somebody. This was in my mid 20s. And all I did, I didn't watch TV. I did was read and work out. I had a four pack, bro. I was, I, I was the fittest I ever was. I didn't read. I didn't watch TV. I didn't do none of that. I didn't drink and do nothing. I just read and da da da. I was locked in. Everything was cool, but the minute I started going back, so the point that I'm making was at that part of my journey, I was struggling so much with what my perception of God's acceptance of who I was mm-hmm. that it. It creeped into all the facets of my life. And it was real difficult for me to just accept who I was, minus mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. because was were you doing any of that? Like in terms of the 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 self conversations about you and, and this and that and the third? Nah, because I mean the beauty about Islam is that not only do you have the Holy Quran, you have Hadith. And the Prophet tells you. Yeah, he he. There had, had are you familiar with hadith? No. Hadith are uh, hadith is the sayings of the prophet. So things that he said and did throughout okay. his life. The people that were around him just documented, documented, documented. So when the prophet went to the bathroom, he would step out right foot first all the time. Right. This the that's a documented thing, mm-hmm. right? Everything he did, and he would say things, and he was he would say things to his followers that gave them confidence like listen you don't have to be perfect out here yo you don't have to you know not not that directly what you're saying like you don't have to connect one thing to the other but the things that he said in his teachings made me understand that one particular action is not necessarily the result of this particular action so i never felt like that i never felt like i didn't get something because i did something wrong uh you know, I didn't get that thing because it wasn't best for me. Okay. Wasn't because you was out here. Your, your perspective was always, your perspective was still from a positive perspective. Oh, yes. Instead of, right. Yeah, yeah. Islam t- taught me everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, the, it's just like, I don't pray for things. I pray for what's best for me. And so that might be staying in a difficult situation for a little longer. That might be whatever, whatever else. But I don't that's it. I don't pray for like money and stuff like that. Like those kind of things. And I'm not knocking anybody who does. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? But that's just just me. So that's how I was taught. So it's just like, yeah, you you know, you ask for what's best for you. It, if you don't get it, then it's just what it just wasn't best for you. And sometimes what's best for you ain't necess- doesn't necessarily feel good. That's true too. Because it ain't you know, Some, sometimes what's best for you feels a little bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, this is uh, what's not. It's not um a loss. It's a lesson. Yeah. And just for the record, sometimes what's best for you feels fantastic. <laughs> like, I, mean, I need that to be said. Like, there's always this mentality, like there's only. But, but 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 I think that's the natural default. I feel like so. Like when when I'm out and I'm looking for, I'm one of those kind of people to where I, when you look for blessings. The average person, when they're looking for blessings, they're looking for something positive to happen. You don't see your car breaking down and not starting as a blessing. But 
Maybe because we're only looking with our perception. Maybe, maybe that was God's way of keeping you from getting into a car accident and you would never know, but because you never know, bingo, you don't think it's not a blessing. And sometimes the quote unquote hindsight being 2020 is where you discover where the blessing actually was. Yeah. Because you're able to see that. That's but true too. Let me, let me let me go back real quick. So you you also mentioned that, you know, you had come to this level of enlightenment. I guess we'll use that um, um, phrase. Can you pinpoint when that was? Or when do you, when do you, at what point did you realize, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is a. Uh... So, um, yes, I can. It was when I stopped doing whiskey and kicks. It was that being in that, it was, it was like me stopping doing whiskey and kicks was like a combination of things. And I ain't stopped doing whiskey kid, but you know what I mean, yeah, right? Yeah, I like the way I was doing it. The way you were doing it, right. right? right. Um, I was, I, I felt myself feeling like I wanted to work on myself spiritually, mm -hmm. right? And I can't continue doing this. Mm -hmm. Like I have to stop doing this if I want to do that. Yeah. And then I'm like, that's, that's exactly what I've been doing. Like that's where I was before. Mm -hmm. And well, let me trim back. And you know what I'm saying? So I made a decision not to make this very drastic decision to say, I'm going to stop drinking whiskey. I'm going to stop doing all these things, whatever. And I'm in, in no way am I sitting here saying that drinking whiskey and alcohol is not a sin. Right. Cause I recognize that. You think it is? It is, it is for sure. I can't, I can't worship in Islam, intoxicated. It's a sin in Islam to, to, to be um, intoxicated, to have your state altered. Okay. So one sip is technically intoxicated, right? Or no? Or, or no, an altered state? An altered state is... Yeah, that's, that's getting into... Yeah, that's getting down into the grain the that, I, that I'm not going to sit and act like I'm some type of... Um, right. You know, uh, 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 scholar to break that down. But when you say when you say worship, you can't worship. Meaning, and my, I have ignorance about the topic. Are you saying you can't go? You can't pray five times a day. Five, during those times that you pray, you can't be intoxicated. No, you can't. But if you're not praying, it's okay to have a glass. No. Because okay. you're supposed to be in a constant state of worship at all times. <laughs> there you go. Right. Oh, that okay, okay. Which <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's that's the basis of any formalized religion, right? That Theological. A, yeah. Okay. No. Okay, my bad. I didn't mean to veer from you. No, 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 no. Okay, no. So, so that's legit. Point. Cutting away from cutting away from uh, whiskey and kicks. So, so during that time, that time period when I I made a decision, like, well, you know, these are things I enjoy. These are worldly things that I do enjoy, but I don't want to indulge as much as I was indulging. And then during that time, also is when I started thinking about how I don't want to be a part of Hollywood. So, because mm -hmm. before it was like. Let's build us up so I can try to, you know, get Market this to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that shit, that whole industry is disgusting. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm only here for a, sm a small amount of time on this earth. I'm trying to get myself in position for, to be honest, the afterlife, bro. I believe in that. I believe that once I die, there is something else after that. And if I have my scope this narrow now, then I will not be able to benefit in the afterlife. Yeah. Hmm. So, all right, well, let me scale down. And, and then I start realizing that I can kind of like still work on my spirituality, still try to get closer to God, still try to, you know, do these things. And yeah, I might have some wine and stuff and whatnot, but in my mind, I know that it is what it is. I'm not sitting here justifying it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it is these, these little conversations and struggles and stuff that, that was going on in my mind. And 2023 was a big year for, for me with that. Do you feel you're closer to God now that you've resolved that conflict? Uh, I feel like I am closer. Yes, I do. I feel like I am. Okay. Now, like my spirituality, my consciousness, my awareness of that I am... Um, I am moving through this world as a traveler, as a visitor. That's the way I look at things. Okay. So 
once I get through, if I can get myself to a position where I could be in his good grace at that point in time, then I did things that I'm, I'm good. You understand what I'm saying? 100%. 100%. So, yeah, that's, that's, that is important to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Go ahead, Joe. Let me ask, let me ask one, I don't know if it's the final question. But to piggyback off of that, what does if what does the ultimate state of being closer to God look like for you? <sighs> what does it look like to who? To me? For you? Yeah, to you. Because it's, and, I, and I'm, I'm asking that because we all know that formalized religions have these have a box that outsiders put into the perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, the same question could be asked of a Christian, of a boot, of, of mm-hmm. anyone that, that has a, a that is, uh, of a, uh, that identifies with a specific religious um, entity. So I'm, I'm asking it for you because we know at our age and our life's experience that the most important thing is what it looks like to me, yeah. not what the formalized religion says it should look like. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm asking you, mainly because you're Muslim, right? Mm-hmm. And I think, and this is the, the EODI Joe kicking in, I think what happens a lot of times is Christianity is the default, and because it's the default, there are these real narrow perspectives based on Islam, depending Mm -hmm. on where you're from, Mm -hmm. um, on top of which people don't give the same grace to that that they do to a person who says, I want to get closer to Jesus Christ. Like individually, everybody seems to automatically understand what that means. You know know what I'm saying? saying? And they really don't. And they really don't, but they they feel like they do. So I'm asking you from a perspective, (laughs) since since this is a win for you over the the course of this year, what does that actually look like? To you, there's, there's, for me, there's, and what you said, there's no separation for me. Um, what it looks like to me is based on Islam. Mm-hmm. So it's, there's, for me, there's no separation. I truly believe that there's only one God, right, mm-hmm. and that He created us to worship Him, and that Prophet Muhammad is His last messenger, and that Jesus is coming back. Mm-hmm. Might be a shocker to people out there who don't understand that this is what Muslims believe, right? So, boom, that is. That is my understanding. So when things go down, you want to be in a good spot, right? So you, we can sit here and talk about whether it's real or not, or did Jesus actually exist, mm-hmm. or all these things and whatnot. Um, I'm rolling my dice on this is all legit. Mm-hmm. So when we die, if I die, and this person over here who's, who does not believe, we both die, okay, if we, if we all dust and, this, and that's it, yeah. who, who loses? No one loses. But if it's not, then I'm in a good position. So what being closer to God looks like for me is being in a better position, in a good position where I have that firm belief and I am um, aware of his of him at all times, mm-hmm. at all times. I never wanted to be to a spot where if I was sipping whiskey or doing something that I wasn't supposed to be doing that I didn't recognize that I shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. So being in this position to always be aware of what I'm doing, being aware of who I'm surrounding myself with, what I'm surrounding myself with, what I'm exposing my wife to, what I'm, you know what I'm saying, all these things, they're all based on just God. That's it. Yeah, does that answer the question? It does. Hmm? It does to a degree. What I what I what I so I've taken ayahuasca several times, right? So mm-hmm. I think I have a different relationship with the idea of what the other side of some of this stuff is. And most of it I can't really articulate with words. But based on what you're saying, what I love about what you're saying, bro, is that you, you, you removed that guilt. Mm-hmm. That is a weight bro mm-hmm. it's like a it's like it's like driving down the street with a dirty windshield like god is going to love us no matter what 
Mm -hmm. It's how we move and the way that we manage the energy as we as we navigate life and help people along the way. And the fact that you've man the fact that you've addressed that part, I feel wipes the windshield in a way that allows you to have a relationship with what the path is, as well as the connection with the energy and the source of what your religion represents and what it's what it's calling to manifest and all of that. Um, because when you, when we go, bro, like, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause, cause as much, as much as I have experienced mm -hmm. ayahuasca, I can admit that I don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. I just know this ain't it. Right. When we go. It's something else. It's, it's, it's. It's something else. something else. Now, how we do this thing called life is it's on us. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's what I'm, I love about what you're saying is that you because that guilt and shame, man, is rough, bro. It, it, it blocks blessings. Mm -hmm. It blocks insight. It blocks connection um, and acceptance of what is, dude. And, and I and. and and you called me, we had a conversation about Whiskey and Kicks going, I felt you lighter in that conversation. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't understand what you were talking about, bro. Because I didn't really get the relationship with all of the, the religious stuff that was going on to the degree on how I was playing um, uh, in your life. It wasn't for me to understand all of that. I just knew that the brother called and we're and he's sharing something. And as he's sharing it, his energy feels lighter. I could even feel it in the content that you started to create afterwards that that was lighter. I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just a period of time. I needed that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I was like, that. oh, shit. <laughs> all of this feels good. Yeah. Yeah. I needed that. That was that's a why that's why did you say that? Yeah, I I appreciate that. Yeah, it was it was it was um. You know, sometimes you sometimes we when I ask questions, sometimes it's not to challenge, it's really to understand, mm -hmm. and to also see how the person <clears throat> manages their own energy and discomfort with trying to answer the question, mm -hmm. just to. Because I, it, it, I, some things get settled so much, I feel, inside of us that in order to see what's underneath, it has to be disrupted. Mm -hmm. And not disrupted in an in a, in a, in a, in a aggressive way, but just sometimes a question mm -hmm. can disrupt the, 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 um, the way in which something sits inside of us. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to push it either either any further but it's like blah, blah, blah. it disrupted something underneath and it came up and then let's see how the brother does and you have a different conversation about it later or whatever the case may be but I didn't understand mm -hmm. why you were making the decision that you were making then I just knew that it felt right for you that me too in the beginning me too mm -hmm. okay. I didn't really understand so much in the beginning but then it felt like something that I needed to do and then I started to do the knowledge do to knowledge. it, and it's like, wow, and start thinking about the path. Because once I, like I said, when I when I thought to myself, just stop doing this and go, and it's like, bro, that's that's the same thing. You know what I'm saying from before, and that's when I really started. It started kicking in, like to think about what I wanted to do and what I needed to do, and stuff like that. So that's huge, you know. bro. So salute to you, man. Appreciate it. Salute, salute to you. Salute. I uh. I'm gonna have to look up this hadith. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta look that up. That sounds very interesting. I got. Uh, he uh, walked out of the restroom with his right foot first. Bro, when I walk out of the bathroom to this day, I walk out right foot first. I drink with my right hand. I shake with my right hand. That's what the prophet did. This is what he did. So I just I do what he did. It's just it's just all this boom. It's just it's the you want to be like like him. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, so that's, yeah, this is what I do. All these different practices that he did, they documented everything. Okay. So, and, and, and this is now some preachy shit, right? Yeah. Just an example. 
I, I screenshot this one because it's relative to the whole not wanting to be in Hollywood and realizing that I don't have a desire to be a millionaire, right? He said, Allah's messenger said, and this is always coming from another person that was around him. That's a hadith. If Adam's son had a valley full of gold, he would like to have two valleys, for nothing fills his mouth except dust. Damn. And Allah forgives him who repents to him. Yo, that, that kind of stuff hit home for me. At the end of the day, we all going to be nothing. We're all going to be in the same spot. And I'm not knocking nobody who is a capitalist or who is looking for the bread. I get it. I understand the value of money. It's really no value, but you know what I'm saying? In, in this environment that we live in. I understand, bro. It, money gets me a lot of things. It gets me into a lot of um, experiences mm -hmm. and, and good times. I get to have dinner with my friends. Yeah. I get to be able to come here and do this. I get to do all these things because of me being able to manage money without it. I wouldn't be able to do a lot of these things. Going to Costa Rica and all these other things. I get that. But my pursuit of it has never been a thing for me. Yeah. And I re-recognize that. So I had... I'm still in the process of trying to put this all in perspective for me and my life and, 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 and my wife because I do feel like Trina probably wants to be rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we have to work together and, and, and figure out what this looks like for us because I feel like I'm rich already. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Cat Williams. Let's move to losses. Hold on. Oh. We haven't gotten your win yet. That's right. I got married. That's right. He did say that in the he beginning. Did start with that. He did start with that. He did start with that. I got, another, I, I, I got another one, but we just spent nine hours on wins. Right. I'm so, going to say. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I'll say this very high level. We talked about fear. Yeah. And I think it's a... Go. Let me interrupt you. Go. Because I feel like when we... When, when we discussed your win of getting married, we didn't discuss why that was a win. It was just you got married. We, didn't deep, we, we didn't deep dive. That's a, that's the luxury of being a host of a yeah. show. So no, no, nah, man, no, nah, no, nah, you, you ain't the host. Bro. I didn't drive all the way over here, put on my good hoodie and matching socks to not know why getting married is a win for you. Okay. Great job, Joe. That's what happens when you get people everywhere yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who, who <laughs> motherfucker get a new <laughs> job and now he thinking that like he run the shit. I need some non-content <laughs> creating friends to watch my content. Exactly. <laughs> I love my wife. Mm. And I don't think she had the best examples of men. And you know, as I've been trying to accept like what my role and who I am and all of that, a part of that is attaching myself and committing to a woman, a black woman in this way to represent like this love and to, and to, and to work through all of these wars of the genders and the, the misinterpretations of what men need and what we want and what we think about and how we can show up. Like all of that is a part of my decision, bro. Mm -hmm. And I love, my wife is one of those people who I think wants to be like a super soft woman. Wants to be taken care of, but she's bought like the lie, if you will. And as a part of buying the lie, it means that you've got to have this kind of relationship with yourself and with men repeat certain narratives about this and that and the third, and she never really wanted to be married. But I don't think she didn't want to be married because she didn't believe in marriage. I think she never wanted to be married because she thought that there was never a man out there who would be the stand-up guy that he would need to be in order to marry her. So. It's a win for me, man, because I feel love wins. 
in our union. And I think there are a lot of women who are fighting love, bro, mm. in a very deep way that their preconceived notions about men don't allow them to see, that their egos and that their pain don't allow them to see, and that men who do attempt just give up after a while because they don't want to deal with the drama. Mm. They don't want to deal with the pushback the resistance, but that's love to me, bro. And that's what I've committed to spending the rest of my life doing. Mm -hmm. Healing the little girl in my wife who didn't believe that men like me exist, like that men like we exist, men like us exist. Mm -hmm. And, to, and, and as hard as it is to feel misunderstood at times, to not get the space that I need for me in our relationship, because I feel like I've got to be so many things to her sometimes, I feel like that's also a part of my assignment. Mm -hmm. And I use my relationship with y'all, man, and, and, and y'all support and our conversations and you know my other friends' conversations. And through that effort, we're working through it. Things are getting better. Things are getting softer. Things are getting easier. And and I don't I don't I don't imagine that all of the things go away. I just think that that's just a part of 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 what it means to love people, to heal and bro. You're not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna have it all together. They gonna fight you. But that's why we the men. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm here for. So. That's why I think it's a win. Dope. I, I I feel like you treated you tried to cheat us out of that. Man. <laughs> good, I mean that's the, yeah. Because some of it is about you know, <clears throat> I'm speaking on behalf of my wife in a way that I'm sure she disagrees with a lot of it. <laughs> but it's my story. It's your win, right? <laughs> it's my win. Absolutely. It's what I see. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say anything different if she wasn't here. I just don't know if she would necessarily agree with it all because we see different things. Mm -hmm. But this is what I see. This is, yeah. And I, I mean, I asked because, like I said, marriage means different things to different people. And you never know what a, you never know a person's life journey that led them or what they had to go through and overcome to be the person that they are to be in that level of relationship. So, you know, that's why I didn't want to make sure we didn't skip over why it was important. Why no, you considered that a win. Because people get married all yeah, the time. For all the time. For a myriad of different reasons. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So why, why was it a win for you? And thank you for pushing me on that because I didn't want to say nothing. And I rarely like talking about myself, which is something that I'm finding out because I rarely, I don't feel like I do often. I'm big on ideas, like all the fucking time, right? Like we're, we're ideas guys, so but ideas and you don't necessarily this relate. Is this so, is an idea for you. Right? Yeah, so like this is like to, for me to connect to certain things like that, um, I feel is rare. So, so, so I appreciate it. Yeah, that's why that's why I got married. That's why I'm going to continue to be the man that I need to be, um, to love and forgive and to be still be me. Shit. You know, like a part of the stuff, I mean, man, acceptance is, is, is difficult. And I, think, and I think your concept of accepting changes, too. Like you, can only, you can only perceive acceptance based on what your perspective is in that time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I, was, I thought I was accepting, and then something happens, and you'd be like, oh, there's more, there's more acceptance there. Yeah. And then something else will happen, and you'd be like, oh, there's more acceptance there. And that's continuing to unfold for me, not just in my relationship with her, but my relationship with myself. Like it's a, it's a, it's a constantly evolving thing um, that, um, that we're just, that we're working through, man. And it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to, uh, to be a part of. And, and I'm thankful, man, that she, that she, uh, that she chose me. Dope. The way that she did. Nice. Dope. Very nice. I love it. Yeah, man. That's what's up. 
losses. <clears throat> I got a friend who passed away. What's that? I'm sorry? I got a friend who passed away. Mm. Missy Kaidoki Day. Love you, sister. December 26th. Condolences, bro. Yeah, condolences. Rest in peace. And her episode was incredible, too. Audio in the beginning. I hated that. Yeah, <laughs> I went back and looked. Yeah, I, I set her mic up. Perfect. When I after I set her mic up, I went to the bathroom because you know the, the joints are recording. Yeah. I went to the bathroom and she adjusted something, uh, and the mic failed. Oh, you told me about. And this. when I came here to sit down and we start the conversation, and I looked. And I'm like, oh, we were talking for like 30, 45 minutes, and the mic was like down here. I was like, shit. Anyway, it's just that. <laughs> it happens, man. It, it happens. happens. I, uh, you know, I'm human, right? So I feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. See people posting these things about people that they don't know. See these people, you know, she was having some money issues. You see people. Let me rephrase that. She wasn't having money issues. She was, we, uh, it's a GoFundMe for it. Mm-hmm. And you see people doing all these other things. And it's like, you know me. You know me. I've loaned you money. Mm-hmm. And I'm sharing and asking for this support. And this ain't something you deem critical enough to support, but you'll post something about somebody else and some other group of people all the way across the world. That doesn't add up to me, bro. It's a danger in that though, James, because on that side, you're, you're, you, you can almost end up doing what they do on the other side, is, is, is have an expectation of what someone else should be doing. But 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 but, but so it's I, a natural feeling. Yeah, and it's I don't a, want, I don't want to take away. I, and I'll tell and I'll tell you why. Yo, it's a we used to go through every year. And I was year, just bro. about to give his example. <laughs> so we had a scholarship fund, right? And we put money into it. We would give six five hundred dollar scholarships to African American students in the DMV, and it came out of our pockets. We didn't ask anyone for a dime, right? We put fifty bucks a month. For a year, every uh, there was five of us. We came yeah, with something like that. Yeah, five of us. We came up with that, and then we gave the scholarships away, literally, right? We would post it. After a few years, everybody was like, "Oh man, we love what you do, sending the kids and all the other stuff to us." And we're like, "All right, cool, not a problem." We would say, "Hey, we're gonna have a dinner. Buy a ticket. You don't even have to come. Just buy a ticket, <laughs> right? Right? Or." If you want to donate, since you think what we're doing is so great, if you want to donate to it, donate to it. Pull them teeth, boy. I can tell you that I have friends and family members who have never given me a single cent, knowing that I'm literally giving giving every cent out of this to these kids to go to college. That's one. Two, I would have individuals who would see me in public, DM me, text me, call me, and tell me how dope the scholarship thing is. <laughs> Wouldn't donate, but then let Big Baller brand come out with some <laughs> stupid sneakers, and they would buy a $400 uh, pair of sneakers. Now, I'm not, copying, I'm not counting anybody's bread. Right. That's not what I'm saying. Right. What you do with your money is that. But I... I'm going to feel a type of yeah. way. You can't help, you can't help I it. I can't help but feel a type of way when you know. You know me. That's the point. You know. You know Joe. Joe is out here fighting for kids in a county whose kids don't even go to school there. That's the point, I'm doing bro. all this community service shit, and I'm sending your kid. Right. If your kid applied, they would get $500, and you wouldn't send $5. Now, now, now this is people I know. Right. That's what, and that's so the only I can I'm not talking with. about somebody who I don't know Absolutely. who don't support. I understood, bro. I'm, 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 I'm acknowledging the real feeling I get. That's legit. 
for I'm the lack of support. I'm, I, 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 we are just this but, I, but, but but I will watch you support other things. What I learned from you two gentlemen on this show, what I learned how to do is to manage, manage my, my expectations. expectations of people. I learned that from this right here. Yep. Learning to manage my expectations of people, yo. It sucks. And that's across the board. That is with friends, and that's what we talked about back then. Friends, family, loved ones, just managing your own personal man and yeah. expectations, right, of, so, of yourself. So when we got a circle of people who need support and who rally and who come together, that's what I look, that's where my antennas are. Yeah. But out. It's tough. It's tough for, and not to speak for you, but I guess I'm technically doing it, but I'm saying <laughs> from the outside looking in, it would be tough for me to have a friend who's going through what she was going through from the outside looking in, right? What she was going through and the critical nature of that need for that period of time that mirrors what you're telling me I'm supposed to be focused on. Yeah. I'm not going to focus on that. I have a friend who's going, who's literally fighting for their life right now. Right. I, you can't convince me that this person on another continent is more important than this person in my life. And you can't ask me for motherfucking money. You definitely can't ask me for that. They can ask. What? what let me. You. That's yes. A great point. Everyone you can, can ask. ask. You can ask. You can't. You can't. That's a good point, bro. That's and a good point. Did anyone ask you personally for money? Because asking for money is one thing. And I can't be upset that, that's anyone a, who's so, asking for money. So but if you DM me or call me or text me and no, ask me for bread. For, for to like send to somewhere to like Gaza or whatever? No, no one's asked me personally. Okay, okay. So okay, here's okay. what I here's what I look at. I see you posting. And again, guys, are, they're not really asking for money. Like, there's a, it's a different right, situation right. over yes, there and all yes. that right. stuff, right? It's a, it's a different situation. That's different. But I see you lending support. Yeah. I support you. I give you money. You, not yeah, the yeah, individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because my motto is I look around the people who I can see and touch. Those are the people who I support. That's where my resources, love, and energy, the, 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 the largest percentage of it goes towards. That's what my resources, that's what I'm acquiring resources for. Yeah. And when I can extend past that, I do that, but it's not at the expense of my community. No doubt. But when you overlook your community, the people you can see and touch because it's not popular, bro. Mm -hmm. It ain't sexy to help me. Right. It ain't sexy to help Rissy cat, but it's sexy to post something about some people over somewhere else who's trying to do something that you don't know. You look like an ally while at the same time, not being an ally to the very fucking people who help you make it through life. Mm. And, and, and that, I don't give a fuck about ayahuasca. I don't care about elevating. I don't care about being like this and that and the right. third or whatever, man. Like, that's fucked up. That's human error. That does not compute in my spirit. It just, it just, it just doesn't. And there is so much incentive for us to look out than to look in like these, these circles of folks that we have, man. Like, I would never, let me, I would never ask y'all brothers for money. But if, but I would, I would hope that the framework has been created to where, like, if I did, it would be a thing to where it's like, oh, shit, this brother, like, really in, like, a situation. He, like, need this thing or whatever. So it's a different, it's a different, it's a different exercise, man. What we choose to support, I think, says more about the forces that are compelling people to support than the thing that you're actually even supporting. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, 
I did lose a friend to cancer in 2023. That was a loss for me. My homegirl, Kim, rest in peace. When she passed, bro? When? Um, I believe it was like, in the, it was in the summertime. I can't remember okay. that. Um, so yeah, we worked together. It's a good friend of mine. You, you met Kim mm-hmm. at my party um, back in the day. And um, yeah, man, she, you know, she, I remember she called me when she found out she had it. She had her, her back had been hurting. And they found it, you know what I'm saying, in her back and stuff, or in her lungs or something like that. She didn't smoke. And, um, you know, I remember when she called me and told me about it or whatever. So, and then, you know, watching the journey and stuff, and she was doing, like, some other type of treatment. She wasn't doing the chemo thing. She was doing something else. Like she got this shot or something out, something that she was doing that was kind of, like, working for a while, but you know how those things go, man. And then she just got tired, bro. She was like, she told me, she was like, I'm not taking it. I'm not doing the medicine no more. And we all know, you know what I'm saying, it's making a decision and shit. So that was a loss in 2023. Uh, I know I told you, we talked about this a little bit when you we were thinking about the topics. Uh, and I told you I had two friends, but really Miss Lily, the one that really hit me, she, uh, that hit me even harder, I should say, she passed in 2022. But I mourned her, like... The whole joint? Yes, son. Uh, I, I was in... Me and Trina was having a casual conversation at our dinner table the other day, and I was crying, talking about Miss Lily and shit. So it was, it was rough. It's still rough. But so I count that, you know what I'm saying, in 2023. So a couple losses there and shit. Um, professionally, no major losses or nothing like that. So uh, salute to them sisters, man. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, I think we. I think I think we're gonna as we get older, bro. I think we're gonna start uh, we there adding to that column because we like that's yeah, that's so a that's a part of the talk about this. So yeah, talk about this please. It's the natural order of life, man. Like we're getting to the, you know, we're getting to our forties, late forties and fifties, and in doing that, then that means our parents. <sighs> Are getting to their seventies and eighties. Yeah, both of yours is here, right? Yeah, yours too. Yep. Yep. But they ain't got much time left, man. That's like I mean, you know, if you look at the pattern of the family members you got, I ain't got nobody in my family really, really kicking out past ninety to ninety, yeah. right? And so my dad is at eighty something. My mom is at wow. you know seventy something. And so in doing that, you know, you gotta and then and then. You also have health challenges and just their bodies yeah. starting to slow down, man, yeah. which speeds up whatever that time frame is. And so I think what's the biggest thing is if you go back to support, what happens is you're starting to lose the people. We will start to lose the people most important to us, right? The last remaining few of those individuals. And then, you know, you're going to start to rely on each other for grief counseling you know what i mean like because whoever goes through it first is gonna have to walk the next person through it afterwards yeah you know um like that's just the reality that is man did you have any other kind of losses like in 2023 no i don't i don't know if i had any any losses no the raffles yeah, I lost a bunch of rappers. <laughs> lost a bunch of rappers. Oh, man, you winning I, if I, them I, your only losses. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, you know what's interesting? I had one that is... It's, a, it's an interesting situation, you know. So it's not so much a loss as it is a circumstance of a progression of life, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. right? And so, like Tiff and I have been married, what, 15 years, 14 years. And so we're we're entering this stage of, you know, when we were on the show, the podcast last, I mean, the episode before about um, just entering this phase of um, no kids, learning who we are to each other again. And I think what's really interesting is that the one thing a lot of people don't really talk about until you get to this space is 
the 180 that happens in your lives, right? Because who you were as parents and who you were when you first met each other, you are a nano of that today, mm. right? But then what happens when your kids leave and it's just the two of you, then what do you do, right? And so I'll, I'll say in that, in the discovery of where Tiff and I have to go to be um, who we are in, a, in, in our relationship and living life as just Tiff and I, Kennedy and Morgan are not returning to <laughs> Waldorf, you know what I mean, or wherever we live. They're living their lives. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. Um, but then that just means I look her square in the eye every day and vice versa. And so I lost a very, very dear female friend. And it was tough for me in the moment. And I'm getting better with that. The loss of our friendship because I have to choose Tiff, mm. right? And I'm saying that because this friend and I worked very close together for almost as long as Tiff and I have been married. Even longer than that. So oh, almost this, 20 years. When you get this new gig. When you, no, I mean right... No, you said you lost her. She passed? No, she's still alive. Oh, oh, you, yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I'm, I saw, I said the loss I see what you of mean. the friendship. I got you, I got right? you. Because I have to, what, what I never understood, and what I didn't, what I didn't see until recently is that there were parts of my friendship with her because of our close proximity and how we we, you know, work together, you know, interacted every day. Like, we literally are desperate like this. Um, that there was, there was mental, and even though, and Tiff explained it to me, that just because you use the words emotional doesn't mean that there is anything emotional from the perspective of, you know, you're tethered together romantically. Yeah. But mm -hmm. there, is, there is space that, they occupy. That they occupy yes. yeah, that no. Tiff <laughs> yep. wasn't occupying. Yeah. Right now, why? You can get into the, that's where the macro and the micro comes in, right? Yeah. So you get into the micro when you can say a lot of different things. Well, you know, we were raising kids and this, that, and the third, and Tiff's personality and my personality, and blah, 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 blah. So there are a bunch of those micro things. Um, but the macro level is now that it's just Tiff and I, that person who is, who was like a sister to me. You know what I mean? Um, I had to let that ride. I had to, I had to give, I have to, not had, I have to give Tiff that space, right? I have to. Mm -hmm. And before, I didn't feel like I had to because there were all these other factors mm -hmm. that didn't, the weight of it didn't feel as heavy as it yeah. does now, yeah. right? And even though Tiff, Tiff tried to articulate it over the years, she didn't do the best in articulating it, and I'm not saying that as a knack, as a knock to her, because she just couldn't find the words to really express what it was. But the other side is, I felt something also. Not for this person, but felt like, you know, if this person isn't there, not a problem or whatever, but now I have to rely on you for this. Yeah. And are you capable of holding whatever weight I now put on your shoulders? Because when the things were in the middle, right, when the things were in the middle, i.e. the girls and how we were raising them and all the other stuff. You had other shit. It, it, it wasn't a priority for you. And that's not a knock to her because, again, we're raising children and it works, right? And it's still incumbent on me. I'm not putting anything on Tiff there you go. in any way, shape, or form that I still should have put it on her shoulders. I'm simply saying the proximity of this individual and how 
how long we worked together, we just naturally became yeah. like like siblings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, but Tiff has made me realize, and and it was it was another one of those things of my journey through 2023 when I was doing some some deep diving myself, which we we probably won't get to it today, but. Um, out of that, I realized where I want to go in 2024, there's going to be some therapy in my life. It has to happen, right? Because parts of me that existed can't go with me into whatever my dream is. And those parts, I've got to figure out just for what they are. I've got to, I've got to, I need someone to help me at the micro level, right? Just what's going on in here? What are... How are you operating? How were you moving? What are those things you were doing? Not that they were all bad or good, but I know you saw a pattern. It's not so much that. I just realized that I now am dreaming bigger and the, and the, the Joe from 2022, 2021, and 2023 can't be what that dream is. He's, he's incapable of getting there. He's, in, he's incapable of getting there because in 2020, one, two, and three, he didn't even think that that was, he didn't even dream that. Yeah. He didn't even think there was a possibility, right? And so, you know, all, I'm, I'm saying all that to say that was, that wasn't so much my loss of my friendship with this. That is a loss, bro. Lady. It is a loss. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is a loss. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not a loss from a perspective of, um, it's a loss with a win attached to it because now I have to focus on my wife, right? I have to, I have to trust that she's capable of being more, right? One, well, that's two. Because the real one is what I realized that I didn't really know what I wanted. Like, what do you want? See, when, you, when you're married this long <laughs> in this situation and you're, starting things over again, it's different than, like I'll say for, for you, Rocky, and meeting Trina, you know what I mean? You, you walk into it at this age yeah. saying, this is what I want from a relationship, yeah. right? You know there's been, you know, there's been all these things or whatever, there've been people in your life situations and it's crafted who you want to be and you have, yeah. you get to select this person, yeah. right? Same, same with you, based on how long you and your lady have been together, there's been ebb and flows and whatever it's gonna be. When you're with someone for as long as we've been together, and then you have such a major shift in the way you've done business for so long as a couple and lived and thrived and dealt together as a couple, mm -hmm. your reset button isn't the same, right? It's not the same as I get to choose you and this is what I want. You have to actually figure out what the fuck you want. And that's, that's I hear you. And you're, I assume you're right. I haven't been married for 15 years. But the beauty about you and Tiff is that y'all have so much newness happening right now. It's almost as if you're like, y'all had one relationship for 15 years. And now y'all starting on like almost, almost a whole, bringing some stuff and starting a new thing from the outside looking in. Because yes. y'all have so much newness. Y'all have business together now. Y'all both have kids that are gone but now. But the difference, though, is while you have some newness, you also have baggage that comes along with you. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all got, so, got awareness, though. You do. Y'all have awareness. But, but you, have to, you have to get a... So in that awareness, you, you have to come to that awareness. True. Right? Yes. And that's the thing. The thing, remember, Morgan's only been gone two years. Yeah. When when we for when Tiff and I showed up on here, right? It's only been two years. It's been like it's been, yes. Yeah, and it hasn't even been a full two years. Yeah. It's been like a year and nine months. When we first sat on this here with you, she had just left. It's just crazy. I feel like so much of my uh, my my appearances on this this <laughs> this show is is helping me chronicle stages of my life. Hey man, this you're is welcome, this man. Is I'm gonna send you. A, I'm gonna send you a bill, brother. Don't worry, man. Hey this man, the, man the, listen. The I don't era. need no money, bro. Right, so like <laughs> we can see that. You know, it's funny. We go. Tiff and I talk about the grade when you asked us to grade our relationship. 
<laughs> we talk about those grades all the time, mm. right? We, we did some couples counseling, you know what I mean? Um, to, to, to learn how to communicate. So now we try to do this thing like two or three times a week where it's just 30 minutes. Each person gets 15 minutes and they have to, they can't be interrupted and you say everything and anything. And that 15 minutes. When that person's done speaking, the other individual's responsible for saying, this is what I heard you say in those 15 minutes. Regurgitating that and then you have your 15 minutes. It's now, exercise, bro. Now we've added an after party. Which okay, usually go ahead, ends go up ahead, going brother. for like three hours after that. <laughs> <laughs> because one of the things we had to learn <laughs> is in order for me to identify what I want. Because Tiff always knew what she wanted out of her relationship. I can't always say that I actually had these are my wants. What do I want? And if I did, why wasn't I articulating it? Right, Something was stopping me from articulating my wants. Wants, needs, and desires to my wife, right? So in that, in this time frame, now that we've been doing it for the past like four or five months, I think, three or four months, something like that, is we're now starting to be able to have some of those tough conversations. The tough conversations that people have when you get to identify your wants with a new person, right? You have those tough conversations early, but that tough conversation is harder to have when you're realizing who you are as a new individual with the same person after 15 <laughs> yeah. years. Meanwhile, you got a kid who moved to Florida, another kid who's moving to Philly. You're, you're still, you know, parenting from a distance. All of that is it's, it's so much happening at the same time. Let me ask you. What was stopping you from articulating that stuff? To be completely honest, um, there was, it's funny you ask that, because I had the realization and I said it to Tiff probably in the early, late summer that um, when I was, because I had been thinking about things all year, but what I realized is that I was, Unable, no. That is the easy way out. There you go. I was fearful. I was actually afraid that if I articulated all of my wants that I had just started to discover that Tiff wouldn't actually be capable of fulfilling them. Mm. And then, if she wasn't, what do I do then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what, what do I do then? The thing about it, and shout out to Tia, another homegirl of mine, of ours. We were talking about something a long time ago, and Tia was like, you should just give her a shot. Just try it. And for me, I was like, I don't know. One, because I didn't completely know what it was. Some of them were so surfacey that I was actually kind of embarrassed to be like, hey, I want this. Because and, and, and it's wild because you're like, how do you embarrass with the person you just raised kids with and blah, 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 you know, 23 years or whatever it may be. But the reality was I still hadn't accepted <clears throat> I hadn't accepted that I actually had wants, needs, and desires. Mm -hmm. and that is something men don't do a lot in relationships. We don't actually say what we want, need, and desire. And that has been, that's where I'm at. When that sex therapist came on, K.S. Lewis, mm -hmm. the homie. Oh, yeah, my bad. Right. Motherfucker introduced us. <laughs> the homie. I didn't know, bro, how much space my wife consumes. Mm -hmm. And I never articulate 
what I want. Because I don't think I actually thought about it long enough to know. Exactly. I never thought that I could want something as simple as that is, bro. And because they're, because I feel like when you have kids, they take up space. Mm -hmm. When you have a woman who has a, a demanding job and who shares a lot, it takes up space sometimes. And, and, and what I found is that for me, the way that I communicate, I have to unfold, bro. Space has to be created in order for me to float and then land into a place to where this thing can be shared, whatever that thing is. I don't open the door and start spitting from the gate. You know, I gotta sit down for a minute, I might <laughs> have me some, a glass of water or some wine, I might chill, I might look at something on YouTube or something, and then, and then so the, the environment has to be created, I feel, mm -hmm. for us to be in a position <clears throat> to feel safe enough to even share. Mm -hmm. And because we communicate very differently than women, I don't think they, I think some women struggle at times with creating that space for us to unfold because we are in such a, a provider mode and oh, let me do this, let me fix this, let me listen to this, let me do all of these things. It consumes the intellectual and like emotional calories that I feel a person would would um, would consume if they're if they're focused on themselves to the degree to where they can find it out. It takes us time, bro. Mm -hmm. And 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 we, but 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 our ladies need to give us that time. Not to say that Tiff doesn't give you time, but it, it's just something you got to be conscious of. I'll add another dynamic to the want being able to articulate it. For me, it was, um, one of the things was, I didn't want anyone else to be responsible for my happiness. I didn't want to put that responsibility on anyone. Yeah. So telling her what I wanted that makes me happy, it was, it was like, well, you should just know. If you've been around me all this time, you should know certain things. On top of that, one. But not even that, not even from that perspective completely, more from the perspective of there are things that I like to do. And based on the way we were with the girls and how active the girls were, a lot of things I just, I did, I did it by myself. So when it came time to share it, now that the girls are gone, <laughs> I'm like, I don't really know if I want to share it with you, mm -hmm. right? Because I could look back and be like, well, there were times where you could have or you couldn't have, whatever yeah. it may be, but I also have to own up that I didn't completely let you in, right? And so, um, so there, were, there were some things cultural-wise, like I'm still going to go to a soca party. Right, like I'm a Trini to the M degree. I'm gonna get me a good I'm soca gonna, part. I would I'm love, by the me. way, I would love to uh, roll with you to one of these joints because I ain't never been to one. I find them fascinating. I don't, I don't dig the music necessarily, but and that's so I that's, would, but 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 I'm not gonna be the dude like in the corner like this or on my phone but, IG and shit. So, so that's the funny part, right? Like I always used to say to Tiff, "Well, I've been going to soca parties by myself forever." Even when we were back in our party days, like I can get anyone to go to a reggae or dance, dance party, off. dance hall party, because that's easily digestible by the masses. Shaba, you know. But soca is such a niche thing. It's kind of like a person coming to DC and going to a go go, right? Like it, you just, it's either in you or it isn't. It was yeah. one of those things. I was like, Joe, I'm not training. Yeah, I'm, I can't literally. go to a soca. I love carnival. That's cool, because there's a lot of other things going on. I can't go to a soca party. It's only one song I want to hear. Right, and after a while, it's like, <laughs> I'm good for like the first two or three songs. But then after that, for an outsider, it's like, am I at a rave? Like, what is I, going on? Where, where, where crazy, are the things going it's crazy. See, I, would, I, I, I don't even know what they like. I be, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, yeah. Yeah. but not enough to go find one and go by myself. Right, yeah. very true. Here's the guy. 
I'll be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm but I'm saying that to say, like, there were some of those things where, like, I go, I love to go to museums. Like, I'm a, I'm a museum junkie. And Tiff would go with me. But then I was so used to going by myself that my pattern of going to, like, I can literally spend hours in a museum. I will read every word of every exhibit. I will sit back, digest it for a second, pause, look at it, and then move to the next. That could take me hours just to finish one hallway, right? And what would happen is every now and again when she would come, come to a museum with me, she'd be like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> right? And so, so I would be like, well, I don't want to take you because, you know, it's you're going to slow me down. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're killing my process. She's like, I want to go, but we can't be here all day. And I'm like, well, if we don't go, you know, so there were a lot of those things that I was, I'm saying that to say <laughs> there were a lot of those little things that I did by myself. And now that the girls are gone, I have to figure out a way to create some space for Tiff to be in those with me. And that, when I talk about wants, needs, and desires, and why I, did, why I couldn't articulate them is, some of those things I had to come to grips with myself. Yeah. Right? Like, how do I peel some of those back? And don't get me wrong, I still believe that people need to have individual yeah. loves, likes, and things separate from each other. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, but over time, Tiff said to me, even, I think we even talked about it on an episode where she said, um, she had asked me, she said, everything you love to do, it appears that you love to do them by yourself. Mm. And in the moment, she was right. Because that's the way our lives were set up. But our lives aren't set up like that anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have to, I have to, so when I'm talking about dreams and goals, right? I said at the beginning of this, one of my goals for 2024 is actually something for my marriage. That's now a goal on my things of things to look at. Well, I have to incorporate that. How do I do that? Right? And that's like, what the therapy piece is going to help you do. Absolutely. So the individual therapy for me is getting into the macro portion of it, figuring out all you of mean those the micro? little things. I mean the micro portion. Okay. Figuring out all of those little things, just you know, and and either recognizing them because once I recognize them and articulate them out loud, I'm responsible for them at that point. I've got to do something with it, right? Now, mm -hmm. if I stay in it, then that's on me. On you. If I change, right, that's the desired result, right? But I can't act like it didn't. I, did, I didn't walk away with an actionable item from it. What well, a beauty of it, bro. What I think is beautiful for all of us, dog, that we're so blessed, man. Mm -hmm. Like Major. it, I, it, Zendo, I'll tell you, I be tearing up sometimes, dude. At just when I, when I connect with how fortunate I am to have all of these things that are aligned so perfectly, mm -hmm. despite of my effort to deny it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, sometimes I feel like I'm working hard to not acknowledge how blessed life is for me and, you know, those around me. And yeah, Israel, Palestine, yes, Congo, yes, Trump about to win, which he gonna win. Yeah, That's bro. crazy to me, son. Highly likely. You know, incredible to me. Despite all of that, we winning and we playing with house money, bro. Yep. And, and and there is nothing we can't do. And my relationship with y'all, bro, are probably two. I have different relationships with other with like other guys. But like like watching watching y'all man is an amazing is an amazing experience. And I get so much from y'all, man. And um there's nothing that we can't do. And I'm constantly reminded by that reminded of that by uh our conversations, um, and I'm looking forward to 2024, bro. Mm -hmm, for like sure. I, I don't know, you know, obviously it's personal to you and Tiff or whatever, man. But I, I have no doubt you are a manifester, my nigga. It ain't nothing. Yeah, you you want that you don't get. You write the shit down. You fucking you you 
you you work it out, dog. I'm trying, man. I'm you ain't trying. No, no, no. I'm I'm saying I'm saying it's I, I, you doing. Was, we were talking earlier about um, part of the process and how we were talking about our kids and stuff like that. Though before we started about um, sometimes people don't always talk about like we're talking about here the losses or the the rough part of that journey. of that journey and how it's important. You know what I mean to see it on the on the other side and and uh, I'm saying I'm trying because when I when I look at the micro level I'm I'm in you know there are these small things but when I look at the macro level it's like um, you know so much has happened in these three years that I decided I made a conscious decision and every year I've taken one step closer to being more refined and being more goal oriented something that I can't ever say. I I never did it before. I'll be completely honest. I mean, my popularity and how cool I am and all those other things always opened the doors for me. Mm-hmm. So I never really had to like really pursue, say I want this and then go get it, you know? And um, that's really interesting being in this space right now, man. I'm uncomfortable all the time. All the time, B. It's crazy. And I just keep trying to challenge myself with it. Let's see how it plays out. Man. And, and, and by you challenging yourself, bro, I think you challenge both of us in our own ways to 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 do it with the with the with the seasoning on it that we put on that shit. Yeah, man. man. Make it look yep. what it is. You know. Yeah. He's wearing New Balance now. <laughs> you know what I mean. Hey, man. <laughs> I got an you, Adidas you, portion you, of, you, my, you, of my collection. You, you Adidas now, like <laughs> things are changing. Things, things, things are changing. changing. <laughs> things are changing. How's money? <laughs>